so welcome to the part 90 of this playlist this is the youtube handle look out for 700 plus videos 3000 plus questions on this channel only channel which will explain you the options the concepts and how to arrive at the right answers so click the join button below this video or the link in the description become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member gain access to the paid important content if you have not yet subscribed do so it will help you with the cloud journey if you have not planned to onboard this journey do so asap let us jump into this question before i jump into these questions there are uh, old videos in this playlist parts 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 all are still relevant man. do not miss those okay the ones that i am posting these are latest ones and these some of these will cover the latest concepts like aws lex aws transcribe and so on text to speech speech to text video and image analytics and so on see you have ec2 instances and you want to share the same geographic area for example if you your instances are in hyderabad region you want to use the same region but you want some sort of redundancy built under uh, the power sources for example what happens is in that case you should not be on one data center you should be splitting across multi az okay so you should go into different az's in the same region so that will be you know you have to spawn your ec2 instances across multiple az's in the same region and that is what you require do you want the same region yes you see this same geographic region now option b says use cloudfront as a database cloudfront is not a database it is a service which is used to help you deliver ott contents like amazon prime netflix and so on it will give you lowest latency the moment you see global in your in your question you should think about cloudfront if you don't see global if you don't see low latency if you don't see high transfer speeds cloudfront is not your answer so option b is wrong option c says use ec2 instances in the same edge locations the edge why it comes into picture so you got aws for edge it brings the world's most capable and secure cloud to you so if you want to improve your networking for example you are in marks and spencers and then you have to process your data there and there itself so you can have edge locations near to marks and spencers and make use of that instead of the data traversing across to a data center and then a compute happens and then you get the process data back that will not be efficient and that is the purpose of using edge locations so you see this person this person gentleman is a politician in india and the reason uh, he started this channel and a lot of posts comes in this channel is because you know they wanted to connect with the audience uh, firsthand and with that in mind he started the Bharat Jodo Yatra he up travels across India and to connect with people the main thing is edge is like you have to stay near where the action happens so this gentleman chose this option that you know just the web connect just the social media connect does not help we have to do a face-to-face -face connect with the audience same thing in the corporate world we try to connect with our client as much as possible and do not bug them but at the same time trying to pass this message that hey guys we are there for you if you have any problems do not think about other vendors think about us we are just you know a door step away so that connect is important and that is what edge locations do now option d it says ec2 instances in aws ops uh, work stacks in different regions what are, what does ops work do for you you know they have used services like chef and puppet these are primarily used for automation ops work will help you with automating your operations for example in the real life we can use it with infrastructure as a code i have a code which will create ec2 instances and i i'll do some sort of basic configurations there but i can automate the complex piece of the configuration through chef and puppet or through this op work now ops work is purely an automation solution in this question nobody is talking about automation solution here so that's why this is purely out of context so this would be our final answer i hope you are able to understand the concepts now let us scan through the next question the company wants to automatically set up and govern a multi account aws environment so which which service will help you with this now let me introduce a service called control tower this is not a very common service but you will get some questions at least one question on that not very popular even for the certification exams but you should know this service so control tower it will help you with setting up and governing a secure multi-account aws environment you may pause this video and read this portion carefully if you want to understand this diagram but let us scan through the other options option a says that we will use identity centers so identity center is just a sign-on service 
if you uh, want to implement SSO, this will help you with SSO. The question is not talking about implementing SSO. Then comes systems manager. What is systems manager used for? It is a true hybrid solution for hybrid clouds. So what is hybrid cloud? You are on premises, you have some services on premises, you have some services on AWS cloud as well. If that is the case and you want to use a common service, you don't want to use a service which is specific to AWS management and then for on premises, you scratch your head and try to figure out, okay, what should I use for my on premises environment? Nobody. AWS helps you with both of the things. So systems manager, it will help you manage your resources both in AWS and hybrid cloud environments on premises multi cloud environments for example you have aws you have azure as well azure cloud now you want to do a multi cloud management of the resources pretty much okay man systems manager will help you with that so this is a service truly meant for hybrid cloud solutions multi cloud solutions so this option is wrong because we are not talking about any sort of hybrid or multi cloud scenarios here now let us look at option C. It talks about AWS config. Now we all know there was a Bharat Jori Yatra. Now imagine if this gentleman was in that crowd and the pickpocketing happens. That means someone steals the purse. What would happen? Now you would want to definitely audit and understand what happened, what went wrong in the security and so on. If that is the case, in AWS, you have something called configuration. For example, you have EC2 instances and you had configured it with high compute capacity and so on. Everything was okay. One fine day, you find out that, you know, we are struggling with the compute resources and you somehow see that, hey, you know what, this is much smaller now. Who did that, man? When did they do, do that? Did they take approvals for this process and so on? So you want to audit that, you go to config and you will be able to do that. So AWS config is meant for as an audit solution. Here we are not talking about audit. It's very important which service is going to provide uh, capabilities with which kind of feature. And then we are left with control tower, which is totally aligning with what we are looking for. And this would be our answer. Now let us look at the next question here. A company is planning to migrate AWS Cloud. This is what most of the questions talk about. They, they, they always say that someone is trying to move their resources, move their inventory to AWS Cloud. And what happens? Now they want to examine the costs that are associated. So obviously the first time when you are trying to move there, you would want to know, hey, what would it cost to me? What would be the costs on a quarterly basis, on a monthly basis, on an annual basis? okay now with respect to so many cloud implementations this is my personal experience what we have seen is if you have your resources on premises and your hardware is locked uh, the cost of operation is almost uh, for example if you are running something at x amount for 10 years and uh, you go to cloud you would be paying the same x amount but only for five years it's almost you know double the cost of going into cloud so that is why you have to be very cognizant in using hybrid cloud capabilities if you do not have a very solid use case to go to cloud do not do that do not migrate there i see clients they say they just have a checklist hey have we cloudized yeah we moved our applications there did after moving there are you using the same capacity are you not making use of auto scaling features are you not making use of disaster recovery features and so on are you not making your system more resilient if the answer is no to all of these check boxes then probably you should go back to your on-premises environment the first time when you want to go to cloud and you want to analyze the cost go to cost explorer you go here you try to understand like how much will it cost and it will give you a lot of details as well for example for example, there is a you uh, there is an Indian Prime Minister visiting Washington uh, today, yesterday and today. Okay, now a lot of people might ask, and not might they do ask the primarily a lot of people from the opposition they do ask, how much does it cost for such business trips? Is it really important? And blah blah blah, so many questions. See, the first thing you should remember is whenever uh, someone is trying to do a visit, they they are primarily trying to sell. Uh, some side sort of a product from, from India and etc or they are going to make some business ties so a lot of time being in the corporate it happens that we as a vendor we are trying to approach the client multiple times in a year we try to go visit uh, there are airfare there are hotel expenses and so on but then that is the investment we have to make to gain more business 
So that is what you will, you, you know that there is a goal there. So with respect to moving to cloud, my uh, AWS cloud, you should also have a clear cut goal. What are you trying to achieve? Uh, even if the costs are more, what are you uh, trying to not compromise? Like for example, you are getting high performance, you are getting resiliency with your cloud infrastructure. So even if you are paying more, are you getting those benefits? If the answer is yes, then you are making a right move, a right decision. Now, Cost Explorer, what it helps you with is you can view and analyze your cost clearly. It will focus and create a budget for you. You can analyze the cost drivers. What are the patterns, usage patterns, services, resource utilization that would affect in making those cost saving decisions? And then you can explore the saving opportunities. Should I use reserve incentives for the EC2 incentives? Uh, go for a three three year locking period and gain a 72% benefit by paying upfront for these three years. So these are the decisions which you can make and reduce your costs. You can optimize your costs. So this would be my answer, but a lot of places I do see that people say, hey, what about pricing calculator? It would work. The only problem with pricing calculator is it may not give you the granular details for specific workloads, okay? And that is required. To make a well-informed decision okay that is definitely required so this is the website on aws pricing calculator you can go there estimate the cost for your solution architecture there are reference guides you how you can estimate your cost you can click this link estimate the cost you can export whatever estimates it has created for you in your csv format pdf format json file format and now let us look at a uh, cost and usage report what is a cost and usage report the cost and usage report is useful not before you migrate. It is useful when you have migrated and you're trying to look at the AWS billing reports to understand how much did your S3 investment cost, how much did your Redshift investment cost. So it is a post migration uh, usage. So th that is why we say cost and usage report is more focused on billing information rather than cost analysis and exploration. And then you've got AWS budgets, what it does. It is just a budget, you know, in, at the start of the month, you guys create budgets, like this much amount I'm going to allocate for my utilities, this much for my food expenses, this much for watching movies like RRR, KGF, etc., and so on. So you can improve your planning and cost control with flexible budgeting and forecasting, kind of. So that is the purpose of using budgets. But now you might say, hey, you know, this is a pre-migration activity. Why can't I use it? See, the problem with budgets is budget is not about making a decision as to what it would cost me to go to uh, cloud. What budget does is you know that you're going to go to cloud and you are not having a surprise how much will it cost. You already know and that's why you're saying that first of the month, okay, my internet expenses cost me 1500 rupees per month. My food expenses for the family would be say 60,000 rupees per month. So you already know, but the moment you imagine you are like moving to a different country, like like for example, UK in London, you have been posted there from your company. Now you don't know the food expenses. So the so that is the time when you will use services like Cost Explorer because it will give you an approximate guidance. You know what in UK, uh, an Indian family uh, spends this much on their groceries average. And then you, you can make a call that, that, okay, you get an understanding ballpark. This is what I'm going to spend uh, per month on the groceries. This would be my final answer. Now, if you have not yet subscribed, this is a very useful channel to help you core with the concepts, understanding the options and making a wise decision how to choose the answers. Now, there are a lot of other channels which are you know, not re having a real content. Man, If you want to clear certifications, you need real content to help you, you know, uh, cross that bridge. So there are some questions which are there available as paid content you can click the join button or you can use the link in the description and become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member so this brings us to the end of part 90. Um, i hope you were able to understand the concepts i'm using some real life examples just to establish synergies uh, among how things are taken into perspective so focus on the concepts and that is the only thing which will help you clear the certifications see you in the next part